Planet Zoo 2 launching in 2025 is actually a pretty good idea. And yes, I hear about all of your comments. But there are five things we are going to discuss in today's video that will bring light into the darkness of why 2025 is the perfect launch date. And one of those five things has actually to do with those little fellows over here. But more about that later. These five we're talking about, they cannot be fixed in Planet Zoo 1, not at all. Right, in case you're wondering, we're not speaking about details, we are speaking about huge things that will make the game much better than the first one. Okay, the five things we are going to look at is, first of all, the franchise mode overhaul. Second of all, we are going to speak about pathing and barrier system improvements. The third one is going to be the navigation system of animals. Number four? actual seasons, making things really wet. And the last one is the animal roster, as you can have imagined. But hold on, there's one more big thing. This is back here, but let's talk about that later, okay? For now, let's grab that and start with the video. All right, but before we start in, here's a little reasoning to why I think a launch in 2025 is more than reasonable, okay? We've got one big thing, and I've got this one over here, all right? If we look at this one, this is what Frontier needs at the moment. That's the one. They need help. And in help, I mean money and fans and trust. They had a real issue over the last couple of years. Layoffs, people moving, uh, other people going to other companies and games they launched pretty much failed. So at the end of the day, what Frontier really needs at the moment is not just more animals of the same or new kind of animal rosters that we've seen 10 times or scenery packs or yet another broken new system. What Frontier actually needs is a new game and a new game that will sell well. We've seen these graphs over here. Planet Zoo is one of their best games selling. And if you consider it's not even on console, it is their best selling game. Many people would now believe that it makes sense to continue just with the same packs, but that's just not how it works, okay? You would need more people to sell these packs, but it's not enough to pay these people. Hence, you need something new. And this is where this situation comes in. Frontier knows they have a safe bet with Planet Coaster. There's a huge fan base of Planet games and especially Planet Coaster. Eight years we've been thriving for a new one. Eight years we've been waiting. Deliver this to us and it's gonna be a guaranteed sale hit. Now what happens with Planet Zoo? Planet Zoo again is their most successful game in sales if you will and it's their own brand and they can expand but they do have issues and these issues obviously are based in the game these issues are based in the core game they cannot fix with the amount of staff allocated to this game however if you have a new game that's going to be sold and will eventually make you whole much more money even after the launch of planet coaster there will be a big fan base an active fan base and if you put a planet zoo 2 in there too it's going to be even bigger the cash flow is guaranteed and you can actually pay pay your people, you can pay the people working. And you know what's even more of an improvement? You can share the work on both projects because the Planet games are super similar. And if both games are just two years apart, the engine and the technology will be rather the same. So they can work with both teams on both things. Asset creators can create assets for both games and the designers can make things for both games and the programmers can either do things for both games. And this is why I think there is a huge chance that this game is going to be launched in this horizon of 2025-6 and it's going to be great. And these will be the points we are discussing now. All right, let's start with topic number one, the franchise mode overhaul. Let's face it, franchise mode is kind of broken. I really love franchise mode, but at the moment it's just barely playable. And there are many reasons for that. Not only the broken souvenir shop, there are so many things unfortunately don't work out over time. The, the biggest issue I see over here is how time is perceived in this game. The fact that we don't really have actual seasons and the fact that the game is calculating the time over month um, became a real issue. And it's not only because of seasons, there are many many things, um, how you would run a zoo, which kind of different effects you would have on guests and on the guest management, um, how different times of days and seasons and months would influence the way a zoo would work, how breed breeding circles, for example, um, would be affected, but also many other things like how a day is shaped, you know, a day from morning to evening, for example. Um, and there are other games out there how they, they do it in a way better uh, manner. And I think this is one of the biggest uh, issues that has to be fixed. 
But the second biggest issue is definitely the way how currencies work in this game. I said this a bajillion times by now, but the currencies in this game are very nicely thought, but very poorly executed. Money really doesn't become an issue unless you play on very hard mode and you go only for carnivores or only for big cats. That can be a bit of a struggle if you don't lay out things properly. But other than that, it's not really a juggle. But the same is actually true for conservation credits. If you go for a little bit of a breeding farm in one of your franchise zoos, well, here you go. You've got a bajillion credits and then you can purchase every animal. There is no other reason to why you would need another um, currency in this game. So as I said, the conservation credits kind of become irrelevant after a time because you can essentially always buy everything else from normal money so you either have just to wait a little longer or breed the good animals yourself but there is not anything that makes it more difficult and i think this is the second thing that has to be completely overhauled and all i'm saying and this is why we speak about planet zoo 2 and not planet zoo 1 this is th both of these things are core mechanics that have to be changed from the ground there is no chance to fix this in an existing game, even not with a big update. Simply cannot. There is no way you can do this. But with these two things changed and fixed, franchise mode becomes such an essential thing because the idea behind franchise mode is brilliant and I would love to see many more things in place. Like for example, um, how, how the conservation credits as a currency for welfare would enable you to get certain rare animals that you wouldn't get otherwise and not that there is still a chance. I would love to see different contents having different effects of conservation credits, like how you, for example, behave with winter animals in a, in a tropical zoo, how you would behave with tropical animals in a more northern hemisphere kind of arctic zoo, and all these kind of things, you know, would make the whole game experience so much better and also will bring people a longer, um, great experience of franchise mode. Number two, path and barrier system. Wonderful, right? Isn't it? A tutorial for path. Guys, I mean, this is this is gonna be the shortest one of the five points. Path systems have to be completely overhauled. Full stop, period. That's it. There's no way around this. And you can't do this. Even Frontier has said that. They have confirmed this with the launch of Planet Zoo. You cannot fix it, okay? They went for it with Planet Zoo 1 because they built upon the version of Planet Coaster. And um, at latest, if Planet Coaster 2 launches with a new pass system, check, we'll get a new one. However, if it doesn't, we can also potentially make check for not a new one. I hope there is going to be a new one. But there's a second point I have over here. It's path and barriers is both in one, because I feel like it's the, the way the movement and the navigation for guests and people kind of are calculated. So the next one is also barriers. I like the barrier system how it is in the game. There's not much I would love to be changed other than gates. We need multiple gates. We need the chance to have multiple gates to access a habitat. And I also want to have multiple gates for staff members in a specific sense that you can say, hey, you know, this is like the southern gate, this is the northern gate, and this is the delivery gate, for example, so that you can structure your zoo in a better way. Because now you have the system that if you have a huge habitat, for example, like an African savanna, and on the western side you have got all of your staff member uh, huts and so on and so forth, and then you put the gate, obviously, on the left-hand side, on the western side. But imagine you have some more on the eastern side as well. There's a second hub with another staff room, for example. You would love them also to go into the habitat and take care of them. They have to go all the way around to the western side. So what we will need is effectively a way better system in that sense that, well, we need a barrier system that enables two, three, multiple gates to get inside of the habitat. That's it. Like, a complete overhaul of path and a slightly improved barrier system, that would be gold. All right, lean back for a big one. This one is potentially the biggest one of the bunch. Navigation system overhaul. And this is where this little dude is back in action, as well as the other one I threw away during cutting. Never mind. We've got the little chimpanzee here, which is our key figure for the navigation system update. It's climbing like this and flying like this. It kind of is how the glitches in the game look. Now, the game-wise, Frontier tried something completely new with Planet Zoo. They brought in a navigation system that actually has done something never been done before. We can build our very own habitats with everything you can imagine, with all the pieces, 
and then animals can navigate in there. This system is amazing, but they found this to be their end game opponent. It's the final opponent because it is super crazy how many glitches can appear in there. It is still very incredible what they have done with it, but I think this is where the huge benefits of AI and the newest game systems come into play. AI is not only here to make funny images, generative images. AI is not only here to generate some text and scripts and make our jobs faster and easier or bring people to rage about copyright and whatnot. No. AI is capable of doing something that is absolutely vital for a game like this. Imagine you have a animal in this game, like the chimpanzee I just threw away, and this chimpanzee at the moment is done with a bajillion amount of animations. They have animated everything. They have animated, uh, animated the head movement, they have animated the hand movements, the feet movements, how they climb, how they go up, how they go down, how they decide upon going up and down, at which angle they transition from one animation into the other animation. And this is calculated by the traversable area in the real time. And this is all programmed. And it's not AI based, it's programmed, which means there is a limit to how much you can do before you fry other people's computers. We don't want to have fried computers. And now AI is here and can help us doing it. Uh, you've seen many uh, game demos already where they reduced the amount of prefab animations dramatically over old games and made this whole system way better because the AI now can decide what they shall need in which situation. You can make movements much finer, you can make movements much more elaborate, you can let the AI decide when they should climb with one hand or two hand, variation and all these kind of things. You basically do not program this to AI anymore, you learn it to AI. So you would give the AI a skeleton and some base animations how you would want them and then you just load the system with a whole bunch of animations from real life animals. The AI will then learn the animations and use the core system, the skeleton and the core animations to transfer that into the game and even will be able to interact with all the pieces. I do believe that this can become the biggest, the biggest improvement in zoo games we have seen, we've ever seen. Now, obviously this comes with the huge benefit of being able to integrate also other stuff like, for example, full flying and full diving. Now at this point we do have great diving, honestly I'm very satisfied with the diving how it is, but we don't have full water, full aquatic animals, we don't have fish, we don't have stuff like that. So. I do think that this would become one of the biggest things if they bring that in and surely Planet Zoo 2 would then also be able to bring us all kinds of animals you will see in zoos. Now, as I said, I believe that the navigation system specifically um, for the animals and specifically for how they move in between different uh, elements of your habitats this is the biggest potential change we can expect and this is also why it's my center point in this video. I think this is why it makes a lot of sense for them to scrap the first game and do not try to push for birds and full aquatics in the case of, of or in the state in which the game is right now with all the capabilities out there but you just cannot use them because it's either not compatible with your current version of the engine or honestly with the stuff available for this game because no matter how great the update is it will never sell as great as a new game with all these features would. So here's that. I think this is a very vital point to why this is the way it is. And I'm very happy if they would really do this huge step in Planet Zoo 2. Next up is actual seasons, including rain. Now, I mean, that was the obvious. Actual seasons are a vital part. And for me personally, the second most important point in this video. Seasons will change 50 to 80% of this game. The reason why is pretty simple. It has influence to all of the systems of the game. It influences the guest, it influences the way you build, it influences the way you plan, it influences the way how animals behave. Let me start with the biggest change that actual seasons would bring to the game. But before we do, let's quickly define what I mean by actual seasons. Because at the moment we do have weather. We've got rain, we've got uh, storms, we've got uh, snow, we've got summer and we've got heat. Now, 
all of these things occur in a very random order, if that makes any sense. And they have some slight changes to the different biomes, but they are also weird. You still have snow in in August in temperate and you still get snow in, I don't know, tropical areas, whatever. Um, I think it is about time that they have a system in which the year is a lot longer and it will actually have transition between the different seasons and they are also named seasons so if there is winter you have an overall average temperature that is much lower in at least the northern kind of temperate areas not if you're in Australia though but you get the point and then with all these seasons come different behaviors of animals for example where the animals have breeding and mating times the animals have different times of where they are more visible and less visible they have different times of which they can be more outside or inside and effectively the way how you build in different biomes anyways and then we come to the second biggest impact this is how your guest would behave how many guests come and also if the zoo is open at the end at all because some zoos may actually close during the harsh winter month to do some refab maintenance whatever there's so much potential you could go in with the different seasons that the first game cannot unlock you can't do it you've heard it in the second point we made in this video there is no way you can change the way how time is actually tackled in this game and so you can't bring in actual seasons that's both very much connected together there's no chance to rip them apart and so with the one change the other is made possible and either way and so i really 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 would love actual seasons because they don't even need to do much more they have the weather system in place they just would need to make the weather actually meaningful by adding seasons if that makes any sense oh and did i talk about the fact that you can also change the products you're selling in your different uh, uh, facilities and you could put out some uh, umbrellas and stuff in, in certain other seasons. You get the point. You've all played Planet Coaster, Zoo, uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. You also sold your umbrellas for 20 bucks in the rain or 50 or 100 or 1000. Whoever did that, not me, surely. So you get the point. All right, the last one in our list is the animal roster. And that's another relatively short one. If there is one thing in Planet Zoo 1 that we are missing, it is probably birds. I know you are tired of hearing that but there is no real zoo out there that hasn't got any birds if you're talking of a big zoo there is no way you can get away with the fact that you don't have actual birds in a zoo game would you call that wildlife reserve game potentially if it would be aquatic zoo game well okay but it's neither of them it should be the full zoo game and it doesn't have actual birds who knows maybe we're getting one or two in the last pack with the walkthrough exhibits but that's not actual birds the same goes for actual full aquatic stuff. Hold on, many people may actually say now, well, you got that, you know? You got butterflies, you got potentially birds, you get the, the two bats we have in the game, um, and you also get the two tortoises and tor whatever, like these little things swim in, and the axolotl, for example, these are like almost full aquatic animals. However, this is the second point in my animal roster segment, and this is a huge one. This is exhibits, small exhibits, and walkthrough exhibits. I understand why they did this. It At the time where the game released, it made sense. But the longer the game exists and the more I play around with it, I figure for me personally, you may actually think different about this, but me personally, having 50% of the animals we have in the small exhibits as actual habitat animals would already give me a huge boost because I think they would deserve a habitat and with that I am fully aware that it would become a huge struggle for them because it needs a full system but as we already talked about the navigation system and the locomotion system assisted by AI we could finally see something like snakes and iguanas and stuff like that in an actual habitat rather than in a box you know for me personally I always call them animated animatronics in boxes which at the end of the day it is and I think this would one of the biggest core changes to a game that would make the game so much more valuable right away. And I do believe, I strongly do believe that making habitat animals a, like the thing, like the, there is nothing else, like this is just the genre of the game, habitat animals, nothing else, no walkthrough exhibit, no these, no that, just habitat animals, they're just animals in the game. No animal is worth more than another, so that makes full sense to me. And I think in the year 2025, 6, we will have the technology and the capabilities and the systems 
to actually realize a system like that or a game like that. And I think with all these five things together we've discussed now, there is so much reason for me to believe that a second game makes so much more sense. Because all of these things I've talked about, the five core things, I think none of them is impossible and none of them is groundbreaking. I'm not even taken into anything new rather than birds and full aquatics, fair, but this is at the end of the day, these are just animals, okay? I, I didn't even talk about any core mechanic added to the game other than maybe an added gate. So everything is something that you would believe is being able to be done during a game that already exists. But with all the outline I gave you at the beginning, with the current situation of Frontier, there is no way that we would see a change in habitat animals versus exhibit animals the way the game is right now. As much as I would love to see it, and as much as I talked about this in the last three years, there is no way we are going to see any of the exhibit animals as a habitat animal in Planet Zoo 1 if modders don't do it. So here's that, I guess. Right, I promise you there's one more thing, and this is back here. Let's open this little one and have a look at it. You can't really tell that much. That was intentional to keep the interest. But in fact, what I wanted to talk about is graphics. We haven't really touched upon that in the entire video. And kind of we take it for granted because Planet Zoo has already a pretty decent graphics. But the development in graphics, especially due to AI capabilities, is enormous. The big advantage is Planet Zoo 1 already has one of the highest detailed models for any game animals you've seen out there. So they can take huge benefits of the existing animals and improve shaders and improve things dramatically. And here's a little bit of a reasoning behind this. Imagine looking at the lion and then take the latest cat we've received in a game. Both animals couldn't be further away from each other from their quality. Simply because Frontier understood their own shaders better and they upgraded the engine over time with the announcement and the integration and with the release of Jurassic World Evolution 2, they updated the engine. So with it, they updated obviously the shaders. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. So the graphics are really something I would love to see improve. They have huge capabilities nowadays with the new engines, with uh, new NVIDIA stuff they brought out with the new DSLL and blah blah blah, or DSSL, I forgot how the order of the, the letters was. It is mega, it is big, it is huge, and I actually expect the graphics to become a lot, a lot better. And now I'm saying something very brave, maybe even for the guest, but that's something for a different video. So uh, let's move on to the conclusion. Right, conclusion time. We've talked about these five points now and the wildcard. But the thing is, will it be there in the next two years? My guess, as I said, or actually my belief, yes it will. And I am very, 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 very positively looking into the future because of all these things we've discussed. If I were Frontier, I would do the same. Is it the best thing for us fans out there? Potentially not. But given the circumstances, there isn't another chance, there isn't another way. We will not get more DLCs over the next years. Potentially there's gonna be more, one more, two more, if there is a delay on a new game, potentially. But as we know Frontier and their reports, normally they put this in their reports and they haven't. Normally they would make a huge deal about this, but they haven't. So it is going to be the last. We will know for sure when the March DLC is gonna launch and it's gonna be a bit higher priced, for example, or it's gonna be very special. You know that's going to be the end. Will Frontier announce that it's going to be the end? Probably not, as they never do. However, and this is, this is the fun bit here, it's not a guaranteed thing, but there is a huge chance now that we will get either support for a longer period of time for Planet Zoo or we will get a new Planet Zoo in a relatively short time frame. The reason for that is simple, it makes Frontier money. So simple as that, if it makes you money, why would you kill it if you need that much money? Frontier is not in the situation to experiment. They are not in a position to change their minds every five minutes. They have to deliver and they know they will deliver on a zoo game and on a planet game in general. I've outlined all the points and now it's up to you to tell me 
what do you think about my thoughts? What do you think about the, the, the video in general, the video editing and the way I present this stuff to you? Do you believe that I'm on the right track? And if not, what would you think? And what would you prefer actually? Would you love to see more DLCs? And given the fact that we will only see the same DLCs and not bigger ones, or are you very much happy to kind of, you know, tackle Planet Coaster for a year or two and then jump back into a huge new zoo game? Let me know actually in the comments down below and um, I'm happy to join you over there. So, well, I don't really have that much more to say. I would just say, have a nice day, stay safe, have a nice evening, whatever time you're watching this video. And um, I'd be more than happy to see you in the next one. And if you need anything about Planet Zoo and you want to learn anything about Planet Zoo, here is a playlist for you or here or here. I have no idea, I'm barely not doing these videos. You'll find that anywhere on screen now. So uh, enjoy it, have a good time and bye. So we're not speaking about tiny things. We are, number four are actually, <laughs> why did I do this? Actual rain and season. That was such a stupid idea.